Hi, it's Fabrizio Paul here. Welcome to another episode of BizJet TV. Today we're going to be talking about, in this episode, about parked aircraft. Lots of questions about that right now because of the coronavirus. Uh, some airlines have grounded their entire fleet. Others have grounded maybe 90% of their fleet. So what happens to airplanes when they are when they are on the ground for a long period of time? What happens to your private jet if you're not using it much? Or if right now your private jet is in um, sitting on the ground not flying what should you do so today for this episode i brought in my trusted engineer martin keeping so we're going to be meeting with martin and having a chat about you know what's the best thing to do when an airplane is parked and also we're going to be talking about fixed costs um, when you have a private jet there's always two variable you've got the variable costs and you've got the fixed cost the variable cost would be things like fuel which you only pay for when you're actually flying and then there'll be the fixed cost which can be certain types of maintenance and, and, and insurance and hangar space and parking and, and whatnot which we'll go into in the episode if you haven't subscribed to Bizjet TV I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and that's all from the introduction here so let's get straight into it let's meet with Martin Keeping and talk about the parked aircraft off we go Okay, Martin, so uh, here we are right now with a lot of aircraft parked around the world, both yep. airliners and private jets. And people have been asking, what happens when you park an aircraft? Um, does it still cost you money? What costs are involved? What has to be done to the aircraft? Or you just literally park it and, and leave it for a couple of months? Right. What, what, what do you do as an engineer? What do you recommend people do? Well, it's, it actually becomes the busiest time for an aircraft engineer. Whenever um, this, I know that the COVID-19 situation is quite a unique scenario, and that in itself has brought up a whole new list of issues, which we can certainly go through. Yeah. But the, the general overview for an aircraft is when it gets parked, there is a whole storage procedure, which is dictated by the manufacturer of the aircraft as to what is to be carried out and when. And it is a very strict regimented process that's required. Uh -huh. um, and this isn't just for the big sort of commercial airliners. This goes down to business jets and also light aircraft as well. Within the maintenance program, you have to incorporate a whole section on parking and storage procedures. Now, there's different kinds of categories to which the aircraft can be stored in. You have a flight ready situation or you have a park storage situation. Now, if you're going into the park storage as the time goes on, you actually take the aircraft deeper and deeper and deeper into a storage scenario. And of course, when the aircraft has reached that time and you need to bring it back out of storage, you then have to bring it back up through the stepped levels. Um, now, starting with commercial aircraft, uh, they have a process where for being flight ready, you have to run the engines once a week. Mm -hmm. And that's idle power. And then sometimes you can take it up to part power, which is effectively 50%. Yeah. Um, and that gives you an opportunity to run all the hydraulic systems, the oil systems and the fuel systems, and obviously the air systems. Uh, you have to disconnect batteries every time you do that. Um, and then you do standby power checks. And, and that's keeping the aircraft in a flight ready situation. Mm -hmm. If you do not use the aircraft for more than seven days, you then have to take it into a lower level. Um, you start uh, removing fluids, you drain the hydraulic systems, you drain the oil systems. Um, and then again, after a month, you then take it into a lower level where you start removing systems and you start putting inhibiting fluids into the aircraft. Um, and then you can take it down to a further level where you start putting um, casings over everything, mm -hmm. where you have all your protective coatings on your engine intakes. Uh, your fessilized portions, which is the shiny surface on the um, shock absorber within the air, uh, landing gear. Um, all the in intakes get covered up, uh, air intakes and um, heater grills, they all get covered up with um, tape so they're completely uh, void to the atmosphere. And then of course, when it, and then you can leave them like that. Mm -hmm. And you can leave them for as long as you like, but then when you start to bring them out, you still have to tow the aircraft as well because you get flat spots. On yeah. the wheels mm -hmm. and um very often certain storage facilities will just leave it they won't do anything about it and just replace the tires when it comes to um starting to bring the aircraft out of storage now um business jets again a, a very strict program dictated by the manufacturer that has to be followed 
Business jets are a little bit more tricky because um, being a private owner, um, lots of operators tend not to put them into a storage program. They will park them up, they will put all the covers on your PETA probes, your static ports, your engines will get the covers fitted and they would tend to leave them like that. Sometimes they would disconnect the batteries, which is obviously a good protocol to adopt. Yeah. And they will tow them around once a week and possibly start the engines once a week. Yeah. But that very often dribbles out and doesn't take place, which um, when you come to, as a surveyor, myself and Airworth in a surveyor, I will look to see if the aircraft has been in storage once when it comes up for its uh, certificate of airworthiness renewal every year. Mm -hmm. And you will go and check to see what kind of storage procedures were adopted. Now, if they haven't been carried out, when it comes up to operating the aircraft before flight or its certificate of airworthiness renewal, I would dictate that they have to have a recommended program issued from the manufacturer mm -hmm. to bring the aircraft out of storage. Now that's gonna cost money. So if you do not adopt your storage procedures, again, that's gonna cost you money to carry out the storage procedures, but if you do not carry them out, it's gonna cost you a fortune. To bring yeah, and of course, back out of storage. And of course, during the time that the aircraft is sitting on the ground, you still have to pay any financing you may have on the aircraft or leasing. Absolutely. The insurance yeah. has to be paid. Um, if you're buying any materials or books or charts for the airplanes, you know, those need to be purchased. The hangar navigational databases. Hangar, hangar needs to be paid, any taxes on the aircraft, crew salaries, unless you want yeah. to fire the crew, which is what some airlines have done. They fired yeah. below the crew because they know the airplanes are sitting on the ground. Um, and then, of course, there's certain maintenance things that you've just discussed uh, that have to be paid for. I mean, if, if you've got your Global Express on, an, on a, on a Rolls-Royce corporate care program, you'll be paying that money every month. Absolutely, um, yes. Or you're, you're, you've got Smart Parts or any of those programs at the different private jet manufacturers or Falcon Care, um, that is paid on a monthly basis. So you'll yeah. still need to pay that. And the other thing that people need to understand is that if you park your airplane in a hangar for a year, it's still going to depreciate, even though it's not flying. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another important thing that people need to understand. So yeah. there are costs for owning an aircraft, even if it's just sitting there and not flying. And those yeah. are the fixed costs. And then we have the variable costs, such as fuel, which right now is really low. So it would actually be a very good time to fly your airplane now, <laughs> with the price yeah. of fuel where it sits at the moment. Uh, but unfortunately, many people aren't because they can't. And you also have maintenance tasks, which are calendar driven. Yeah. Exactly. Which still need to be carried out irrespective of whether you fly the aircraft or not. Yeah. So they will have to be carried out. But with this COVID-19 scenario being the unique scenario that it is, we also have another problem where airports are refusing to operate, will refuse you to move aircraft, which will now put a whole new issue because yeah. you can't do the towing. You cannot run your engines. You're not allowed to have this close proximity with people. So your aircraft is now put into a more fragile situation, which is currently being discussed as to what are we going to do to bring some of these aircraft out of storage because they haven't been in long enough where you could just leave them. So they haven't sort of had all the fluids removed, all the toilet um, waste systems, fuel systems, oil systems with inhibiting fluid installed. We have not reached that stage yet because we've only been in lockdown for about three or four weeks. So you haven't even hit your month of storage. So in theory, you should have been attending that aircraft on a routinely basis, according to the manufacturer's recommendation, whether you're a commercial airliner or a business jet operator or private owned, privately owned general aviation aircraft. All of these aircraft should have been touched, rotated wheels, engines possibly turned over, power systems cycled, but they haven't been allowed on the airport because of COVID-19. They haven't been allowed to get in close proximity because some of these jobs take two people to do and you will be in close proximity to each other. So this has brought a whole new avenue of issues on which the manufacturers are currently devising a program to as to how to bring these aircraft to make them airworthy again. So um, there may be a need for a okay. further discussion on that. Well, here's a question then. Once this thing clears, okay, and everybody starts to get the airplanes back in the air, because of what you've just said, do you think there's gonna be a lot more failures? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, without yeah. question, because at aircraft, certainly the larger commercial airliners and a lot of the business jets, which are heavily avionic driven, they do not like to get switched off. Yeah. And you switch them off and you start putting a lot of problems into the software, a lot of problems into the power systems and the control systems and the, um, a lot of the um, Ethernet um, systems that are on board some of these aircraft. It's 
and the fly-by-wire systems, they deteriorate early if you do not keep these systems powered. So, so here's a message. Yeah. Any of you that's watching that have your own private jet, that's maybe in some location in the United States where you have a small local airport where you keep your jet, roll the jet out the hangar, take it up for a 30 minute flight, keep it flying, um, because you don't want any of these failures to creep in when maybe you're on a business trip. So tell your pilots, take the plane out for a half hour spin around the circuit, do a few landings, yeah. practice, get the, all the systems going, the landing gear coming up and down, the flaps out and whatever, even though it's going to cost you a little bit of money. But as I said before, you know, fuel's really cheap right now. So keep your aircraft flying if you can, um, yeah, yeah. because you don't want to go incur into one of these failures that Martin just mentioned. So what can the airlines do to avoid this? I mean, if they can't fly their airplanes, um, I mean, is there anything else you can do or, or, or not really? Well, it, it's... It is a catch-22. Uh, normally you are dictated by the manufacturer as to how you do your storage program or unless as an operator owning your own maintenance program you have declared to your regulatory authority how you intend to carry out parking procedures and storage procedures. So we are just short of a month of um, a lot of these aircraft being parked up. It's, it's going to be quite simple, quite easy just to sort of carry out the early stage storage procedures. But they have to, a lot of these airlines are parked and flown the aircraft out to places like Sorel in Spain, um, Bournemouth, uh, Coventry, certainly here in the UK, lots of airlines are now to, in America into Victorville, which is the yeah. large sort of uh, parking and long-term storage facilities. So all the engineers are absolutely run, running around like little ants working away on the aircraft. And as well, it's a great opportunity for the airlines to get the aircraft modified get the aircraft upgraded, um, utilize this time to actually get the aircraft um, serviced and have various different checks carried out. So when the uh, ban is lifted, everyone's ready to roll. So if you can get your aircraft into a maintenance facility that is still working because a lot of these aircraft are running still with medivac um, and storage and um, supply chain um, operators, then they, a lot of them are getting the opportunity to sort of keep working as key workers so they can carry out the work on the aircraft. So get all the maintenance checks carried out. Because again, if you're in maintenance, you're not deemed as being in storage. Yeah. So if you can, you can uh, actually get your aircraft under a contract where you can get the maintenance carried out, that's going to be your ultimate situation. Yeah, and also talking about calendar events, uh, there are also calendar events for pilot training, which every six months they need to do. So, uh, you know, if your pilots are coming up to that, that the checks that they need to do, assuming the sim flight simulator uh, facility is open uh, and your pilots can actually travel there uh, because a lot of the private jet flight simulators are in the United States um, and not everybody can get to the United States right now. Um, so that's another thing that needs to be taken care of. But, you know, if, if your pilots are due to do their training in a month's time, but your airplane is down now, why not get them to go out now and get that yeah. training out of the way a few weeks early so that when yeah. you can resume flying, you are ready to spring into action because I, I think there's going to be a surge in private jet travel and private jet ownership once sticks things clear uh, for many reasons. Um, and so, you know, you want to be ready to start rolling with your jet um, as soon as this thing clears and this ban has been lifted. Okay, yeah. Martin, thank you very much. And um, anything else you want to add before we close on, on storage and, and fixed costs and that? Yeah, it's, it is one of those sort of uh, misnomers and misunderstood uh, section certainly within aviation again it's, it is a hidden cost because as soon as an aircraft is put into a storage it's going to cost you money straight away because all your additional costs your maintenance programs your engine ma management programs they still tick and even if because you are not accruing if you're on a leased structure where you're paying maintenance reserves you may not be putting in the utilization of the aircraft accruing the time with your flight cycle or flight hour contributions because you're not flying the aeroplane, you still need to put aside those costs because that time where it's all been grounded, it's the clock doesn't stop ticking and the bills will still come through. So yeah, you need to make sure that you put that reservation in place, regardless whether your aeroplane is flying or not. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, an aeroplane is built to, to sit in the air, not in the, on the ground. Absolutely, yeah, and they don't so, look it on the ground. <laughs> yeah, so, so you need to really, uh, you know, keep the airplane systems going as Martin has just recommended. And if you can take your airplane for flying, uh, by all means do so, because that's where it needs to be in the sky. 
um, in order for all the systems to work properly. Uh, what we don't want to happen is for any of you to launch out in maybe a month's time, having your airplane not flown for two months, and then suddenly the landing gear is not coming out, and, and yeah. now you, you're going to have a problem. So, so and, it'll and, be worth getting an engineer to have a good uh, visual of the airplane to make sure it is in a good airworthy state before you uh, depart if you haven't put it through a parking process. So would you recommend that anybody that's got their own private jet that has had it in lockdown for six to eight weeks to do a test flight first before yeah, they you, actually go off on a trip? You, you want an engineer, you, you should have had the aircraft in some form of um, short-term storage anyway, yeah. as part of the maintenance procedures. If you didn't do that, then you will absolutely need an engineer to come and give a good visual inspection of the airplane, all the primary systems, carry out a certain number of um, primary function checks, almost carry out an A check on the aircraft before it departs, go up, fly it around for, it's normally deemed a 30 minute time frame would be sufficient to take the aircraft through the entire flight envelope. Yeah. Make sure everything's functioning properly. If you've got an auxiliary power unit fitted, take it right up to the ceiling altitude to which the APU should be able to start and test that. Yeah. Um, and then make sure you're getting all your full indications and the full limitations within your flight envelope functioning properly. Carry out a good landing, possibly a little bit faster. Um, and then make sure you've got a decent air pressures and um, in your shock absorbers before you depart to make sure you're up to right pressure on those as well. So you, they don't bottom out and the seals fail as you land. Yeah, and as I always say, you know, a private jet is there to save you time. Uh, it's there to buy you time. And the last thing you want is for the airplane to go tech uh, or to be grounded. So you want to make sure it's functioning properly so it does serve its purpose. I always tell people I do not sell aircraft, I sell time. The airplane is just a means of giving you more time. And so, you know, safety is really important and making sure that airplane does its job when you need it to do its job is fundamental. Yep. Martin, thank you very much for being on Bizjet TV well, once again. And uh, your details will be posted below. And um, thank you. Speak to you soon. Okay. So now you learn all about fixed costs on private jets and on aircraft and what happens when aircraft are parked and what you shouldn't do and should do. Uh, so now I encourage you to have a look at this next video, which is five things to avoid when you're buying a private jet. And if you want to hear more about Martin's adventures in the private jet world, Check this one out, three weirdest things found on an aircraft flea by and Martin will tell us some very interesting stories. And if you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and comment below. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one.